This is Tune Up Thursday. My name is Willie Wright. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, I got a good one for you to jumpstart your day, to bring joy to your morning. Thank you so much. Um, welcome to our devotion on Thursday. It's designed to jumpstart your day, to bring joy to your morning. Listen, um, according to recent statistics, there are 32 million Americans that are living alone right here in the United States. And um, also, you will discover that um, there are 5 million of them that we call millennials that are between the ages of 18 and 34 that's living alone. That's 10 times more than um, what people are living alone in 1950. Incredible. You're going to be glad that you tuned in today. Uh, got a good one for you to jumpstart your day to bring joy to your morning. As you can see, I've got a new setup here. And so you got to bear with me. I hope the volume is okay. I hope the picture is okay. But bear with me as we go along here. It's going to get better uh, with Tune Up Thursday. Uh, let me just share with you um, a question that we want to explore for the next three days, uh, three Thursdays, all right? Um, we're looking at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. This is what the Bible says. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. So you might be asking the question, then why am I single or a why am I still single if God says in Genesis chapter 2 in verse 18 it's not good for man to be alone? Well, that question why is a powerful question. When you get in and drill down and start asking the question of why, you get into um, the possibility where you can reach your goals, um, you can be inspired, you can be motivated. That's why I believe adolescents, you uh, often ask that question of why. Why? Um, well, um, we're going to explore why am I single? So you want to make sure that you tune in uh, because we're going to be exploring that. Well, if you look at the biblical perspective of singleness, you will find something very interesting to help us understand and navigate uh, this idea of being single. Now, you may not be single, but um, you may know somebody that's single. S continue to listen in and you can uh, share this uh, video uh, to them. It'll be a blessing to them. We're looking at Genesis chapter two, verse 18, where God said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable uh, to him. Well, let's what see what the Bible has to say in regards to singleness. All right. For, first of all, I think we need to define what singleness is, because I believe that there's a lot of confusion on what it means to be single. Being single is a person who is unmarried or a person who that has never been married. It's, it means a person who is widow where their spouse has died. It also means a person who is could perhaps be unmarried and have children. They're still single. All right. Um, you could be legally or biblically divorced. Uh, you are considered a single person. Something that is quite interesting that I found uh, in the Bible is you can read from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find Anything where the Bible describes uh, an, un an unmarried person as being single. Um, there is no such thing of a single uh, person uh, who is unmarried, according to the Bible. The Bible simply uses the term unmarried. Um, there is nobody living a solitary life. That's why the Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. Nobody's single. All right. So when the Bible uses the the Bible doesn't use the word single referring to a person who is unmarried. That's the first thing I want to uh, get to us to understand. And that one of the things that the Bible lets us know is that singleness is not a bad thing. Singleness is a good thing, depending on the circumstances. Looking at first Corinthians chapter seven and verse six, if you look at first Corinthians chapter seven, verse six, here's what the Bible says. And Paul says this by God's permissive will he says for I would that all men were even as myself and then if you jump to verse 8 he says 
I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widow, it is good for them if they abide or live even as I. So Paul uh, very quickly uh, helps us understand that being single is not a bad thing. It is a good thing. In fact, if you read on in First Corinthians chapter seven, you'll notice that he says it's better than being single than it's being than being uh, married. And this word good, when you look at the Greek, it means virtuous. It's a virtuous thing to be single. I know some people would think otherwise, but according to the biblical understanding um, uh, here that Paul is making or point that Paul is making here is that being single is a good thing and not a bad thing. And sometimes society puts a, the bad rap on being uh, single, but it's not bad at all. In fact, Paul says that it is a good thing. And in verse 26 of that same chapter, he kind of uh, qualifies why it is good uh, to be single. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 again in verse 26, and this is what he says. I suppose, therefore, that it is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. So we're not quite sure why, um, what was going on during that time. But Paul says that there was distress that was going on in his environment. And so he's saying at the present time, it's good because of the stress. Um, and so there are circumstances in which it is better or good for us to be single. And um, so Paul makes it very clear that sometimes it's good uh, to be single. I believe there are there are seasons of life where it is good to be single and not married. Uh, for example, if you're unemployed, that's a good time to be single. If you're unemployable, and that is you don't have um, a career, you haven't graduated from college or anything like that. Um, if you're immature uh, or if you have unresolved issues in your life, that's a good time to be single. And so, again, um, singleness is not a bad thing. It is a good thing, according uh, to the Bible. Singleness is not a disease. Um uh, it it is not a disease that should be cured by marriage. Some people think about that, uh, uh, think like that. And also, I want to let you know, because you're single, uh, you're not gay. Sometimes uh, people put that on you. Well, uh, why are they so single? Why are they still single? Um, and first thing that comes to their mind is that they're gay. That's not true. Um, it, so it's not a bad thing to be single. It's a good thing. Uh, to be single. When you read on in First uh, Corinthians chapter seven, you'll find that Paul also lets us know that singleness is not only good, but it's also a gift from God. We're looking at that same verse, First Corinthians chapter seven, chapter seven, verse seven. Here's what it says: For I would that all men were even as myself, but every man has his proper or own gift of God, one after this manner, and another after. That So Paul uh, puts singleness in the category of a gift. And uh, this word gift is a very interesting word. It simply means God's favor or God's grace. And so um, singleness is uh, a favor of God, a gift that God uh, gives to us. Um, now, every there are times in life and we find um, that life begins um, with being single all the way up to uh, perhaps uh, young adulthood. And that is for the purpose of self-development. And so all of us go through this season of singleness and the purpose is for self-development. Um, now, there are those who have this gift and I call it an abiding gift. Some people have the gift to abide uh, for the rest of their life, the duration of their lives to be single. Um, this is, I call it an extraordinary gift that God gives to some people. Um, and so Paul, uh, you find that Jesus talks about it in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 10. Um, in fact, I'm going to jump to verse 12, um, to, to cut time. This is what he says for a person who, um, um, has this abiding gift of being able to live life as a single. Some people just don't have that gift. 
uh, they need to be married. But so I'm going to look at first Matthew chapter 19 and verse 12. Here's what it says. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men and there be eunuchs. Those are people who are unmarried. All right. Which have have been made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. In other words, what Jesus is saying, some people have this gift, uh, this abiding gift to be single. And then there are some people who just not do not have uh, that gift. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is that singleness is a gift for some. It is a season for some. It is an it's an abiding gift in which they can live their l entire lives uh, being single. But in any rate, it's a gift from God It's something good. And when you think about a gift that somebody gives to you, um, that reminds me of the fact that God must have a plan for your life. And God does have a plan for everybody's life. And so um, a part of God's plan may be that you live a life of singleness. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It is a gift from God. Not everybody can live a life of singleness. And so um, that means that if it's good, it's a if it's a gift, that means it's legitimate. It is legitimate to be single. And so don't be pulling your hair out, stressing out because you're still single. Uh, it's a gift. It is good in uh, some circumstances to be uh, single. All right. One of the things that we realize is that when you look at the plan of salvation, the plan of salvation had it where the savior who would come if there was an emergency that would take place. And it did when sin into the world, an emergency took place that Christ would come and live and die as a single person to save you and I. So it was planned that Christ, our savior, would live a life of singleness. Now, that's good news to me and perhaps good news to some of you who who are single and uh, who know somebody of that is a single because the Savior, Jesus Christ, was lived a life for 33 and a half years. He lived a life of singleness. And by the way, as you look at his life in the Gospels, you'll find that Jesus lived a successful life. He lived a fulfilled life. And you can do the very same thing. If you know somebody that's living a single right now and they're stressing out as a result of that, let them know that Jesus lived a successful life. He lived a full life and you too can do the very same thing. But even greater than that, I want to say that Jesus is able to sympathize and empathize with those who are living single because he knows what it's like to live single. And so that's what I want to leave to you today. This is Tune Up Thursday. My name is Willie Wright. Glad you tuned in. Um, I hope this was a blessing to you. Share it on your timeline and uh, hit the like button. I saw some of the like buttons there. And um, if give me some feedback. We're going to shift gears now and we're going to take prayer requests. Now, I want to let you know that um, that um, this is all new to me. So uh, it's going to get better as we go. And so if you have any prayer requests, go ahead and and, um, and give them on the comment line and I'll pray for them. I believe in the power of prayer. I've seen God do some incredible, magnificent things. And so if you have any prayer requests, why don't you give them to me right now and uh, we'll go ahead and pray uh, for them. All right. I don't see any prayer requests right now. And so I'm not sure whether my system is running uh, slow or not. All right. I think I got some coming up now. All right. Um, all right. This is my wife and we're praying for my family and uh, praying for the Cuffy family. And so, Lord, I thank you so much for your great love, your goodness that you show to us every single day. And I pray for my family, um, asking that you would cover us with your love, uh, that you remember the Cuffy family, the Shinholster family. You know every single individual that is a part of that this um, uh, family. And you know our needs, you know our concerns, you know our joys. I place them in your hands. Oh, God, I'm asking that you would remember uh, Barbara Hayes in a very special way, um, asking that you would remember her family, remember the Capital City uh, SDA church family, uh, remember her brother David 
in a very special way. And she has an unspoken prayer request for her daughter, LaQuinta. We know that, Lord, there is nothing too big, nothing too small that you cannot handle. And to what we're asking and we're placing it all in your strong hands. Remember Mose Thomas asking your God that you would um, touch him and his family with your finger of love, your healing hand. Uh, we, as we read the Bible, the Gospels, we know that there uh, we read and we have read where you heal those who are blind. You even raise those who are dead. And so I know that you are the same God as you were yesterday. And so I'm asking that you would touch the family, the uh, Thomas family, in a very special way. We're also asking you, Lord, that you remember Justin. Um, Lord, uh, you know what his challenges are. You know what brings joy to his life. We're asking you, Lord, that you would do a miracle in Justin's life, that you would strengthen the hand of his family. Remember the Tyrell family in a very special way. Uh, Lord, you know exactly what they are in need of. We're asking that you would give it to them, Lord. Um, but we know, Lord, that you only give that which is good. And so we're asking that you would bless them abundantly. And now, Lord, I'm asking that you would uh, finally I'm asking that you would give my grandchildren and my daughter traveling mercies as they travel uh, back home. Uh, help them um, wherever they might be at this time. We're asking that you would be a shield to them, be a protection uh, to them, and um, that um, you would bring them back home safely. We are so grateful for what you do in our lives every single day. Continue to be with us. Bless this uh, ministry, uh, Tune Up Thursday, and may those who tune in uh, receive the blessing that you have for them. Uh, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. This is Tune Up Thursday everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to share this on your timeline. Hit the like button. Check out my YouTube channel. Is you Tune Up Devotionals. You Tune Up Devotionals to jumpstart your day, to bring joy to your morning. We'll see you on next week. Same time, same place. Don't forget now. Share it on your timeline. Hit the like button and I know um, that somebody will be blessed. This is Tune Up Thursday. My name is Willie Wright.